When there is an overwhelming threat to the body, the nervous and endocrine systems produce a well-coordinated, generalized, nonspecific response designed to ensure the survival and health of the individual. Your goals for learning are to understand stress in terms of endocrine function, to learn how the nervous system directs a generalized, nonspecific response to stress, to review epinephrine, to review cortisol. Here's what you need to know. The neural input to the hypothalamus, the relationship between the hypothalamus and the autonomic nervous system, the anatomy and function of the hypothalamic pituitary axis. To see definitions of terms, click the bold red words. In this module, we have reviewed hormones that control growth, reproduction, and maintenance of the internal environment. We also have reviewed hormones associated with situations that pose a serious risk or physical or emotional harm to a person. In each instance, the body responds in individual ways to maintain homeostasis and with a coordinated, generalized, nonspecific response called the stress response. Increased blood levels of the hormones epinephrine, norepinephrine, and cortisol are markers that indicate that an individual is experiencing stress. Click Continue to observe stressors. Stressors include prolonged exposure to temperature extremes, heavy exercise, fright, surgery, and emotional stresses, happy or unhappy. The hypothalamus directs the body's stress response. The nervous system sends information about the stressful condition to the hypothalamus, which then engages both the nervous and endocrine systems in response. Click the hypothalamus to begin. The hypothalamus engages the sympathetic nervous system in a neural and endocrine response, the well-known fight-or-flight response, which prepares the body for immediate physical action. In a combination of direct action by the sympathetic fibers and epinephrine from the adrenal medulla, cardiac output, CO, increases, ventilation increases, blood pressure rises, and is maintained at a level adequate to drive blood to the working organs, and blood flow is redirected from the GI system and other quiescent organs to skeletal muscle and the heart. Sweating is stimulated. Epinephrine reinforces the actions of the sympathetic system, especially relaxation of the airways and dilation of blood vessels to skeletal muscle and the heart. Epinephrine directly stimulates tissues to meet increased metabolic needs. The major effects of epinephrine are... Stimulation of glycogenolysis in liver and skeletal muscle, gluconeogenesis in the liver, and lipolysis in adipose tissue. Glucose and fatty acids provide fuel for working organs. Notice that this metabolic pattern is similar to the pattern in the post-absorptive state. The activity of the sympathetic system and epinephrine inhibit the release of insulin and stimulate glucagon. 
Glucagon reinforces the fasting metabolic state and the active inhibition of insulin is essential to keep plasma glucose levels high. The fast-acting catecholamines initiate the stress response. They produce rapid, short-term changes because they are secreted rapidly from storage vesicles and they act rapidly on target cells. The effects end quickly when catecholamines are removed. Click the anterior pituitary to continue. The hypothalamus stimulates release of corticotropin-releasing hormone that causes secretion of ACTH and ultimately cortisol for a more prolonged response. Because its synthesis and release are slow and cellular responses require transcription and translation, the effects of cortisol occur after a lag of about 30 minutes. Click the adrenal cortex to continue. Adrenal cortical hormones maintain and amplify the effects of adrenal medullary hormones. Together, the two parts of the adrenal gland act as a functional unit that first initiates and then maintains and modulates the response to stress. Remember that cortisol is a glucocorticoid named for its effects on glucose metabolism. Cortisol mobilizes energy stores and stimulates breakdown of protein, providing amino acids to the liver to produce glucose. The amino acids can also be used to repair damaged tissue. Cortisol acts on the liver to both produce glucose and store it as glycogen. Cortisol stimulates breakdown of triglycerides in adipose tissue that increases fatty acids for fuel and glycerol for producing glucose in the liver. Fuels continue to be made available, glucose for the brain and fatty acids for other tissues to ensure survival at a time when an individual may not be able to eat. In the presence of norepinephrine, cortisol enhances the constriction of blood vessels. This is an important contribution to maintaining blood pressure. Cortisol also inhibits inflammation and other aspects of the immune system, keeping it in check. Click the hypothalamic pituitary axis to study additional hormones involved in the stress response. Aldosterone is secreted from the adrenal cortex in response to increased angiotensin. It promotes retention of salt and water to maintain blood volume and blood pressure. Vasopressin, ADH, is secreted from the posterior pituitary. It promotes water retention and with angiotensin directs vasoconstriction effects. This response becomes more complicated as combinations of the hormones we have discussed act to reinforce existing effects and add others. Click Continue to see a simplified version of both rapid and prolonged responses. The nervous and endocrine systems maximize gas exchange, mobilize fuel, and maintain the necessary pressure to deliver blood to essential organs. These two systems work together to maintain high levels of oxygen and nutrients in the bloodstream and to ensure their delivery to essential organs. Pathological changes in the secretory activity of the adrenal medulla are rare. There are no recognized pathologies that cause hyposecretion of the catecholamines from the adrenal medulla. Because the sympathetic nervous system may replace many of the functions of the adrenal catecholamines, an individual can live without the adrenal medulla as long as the sympathetic nervous system is intact and functioning. A rare tumor called a pheochromocytoma, usually found in the adrenal medulla, secretes large amounts of the catecholamines and is not controlled by the sympathetic nervous system. Symptoms associated with a pheochromocytoma may be persistent or intermittent. Episodic symptoms can arise from probing the tumor, standing up or lying down, or abdominal pressure. This patient has a pheochromocytoma and has come to the doctor today because he feels very ill with many of the symptoms of hypersecretion of catecholamines. Based on what you know about the actions of catecholamines, especially epinephrine, choose the symptoms that the patient might have and drag them to the patient's chart.
The most prominent feature in patients with a fia chromocytoma is hypertension. Catecholamines act on the cardiovascular system to maximize cardiac output by increasing heart rate and force of contraction. Catecholamines increase total peripheral resistance. Increases in cardiac output and peripheral resistance cause blood pressure to rise. The treatment of choice for a pheochromocytoma is surgical removal of the tumor. Secretion of catecholamine hormones then returns to normal and is again under the control of the sympathetic nervous system. Here's a summary of what we've covered. The response to stress is mediated at first by the sympathetic nervous system and epinephrine and later by cortisol. The response to stress is designed to protect the body from harm and ensure survival. All about epinephrine and cortisol and the causes and consequences of hypo and hyper secretion of each.